So now it says, figure 3 shows a girl standing on a uniform plank AB of length 3 meters and weigh 270 newtons. So the plank has a length of 3 meters and weighs 270 newtons. Now it says the plank rests on two scales that are connected at P. The plank rests on two scales that are located at P and Q, a distance of 2 meters apart. The scales are equidistant from the ends of the plank, as shown in figure 3, and the scale at P reads 354 newtons, and the scale at Q reads 417 newtons. So let us see what they want us to do for this. So they say on figure 3, draw and label all the forces that are acting on the plank. So we can consider our diagram again. So in the diagram, what we have, we have a girl standing on a plank and they told us that the plank has a total length of 3 meters right and we have these two scales located at P and Q right and they are 2 meters apart as is indicated here and we're also told that each scale is equidistant from the end of the plank so in other words what they're saying is that if this is 3 meters and this is 2 meters then we have an extra 1 meter but both planks are at equal distances from the end of the plank so what that means is that that one meter is actually shared between these two in terms of their position from the edge of the plank. So what that, what that means then is that the distance from the end of the plank um, to P is 0 0.5 meters. Similarly, the distance from Q to the end of the plank is also 0 0.5 meters. So now for this, what they want us to do again, they want us to draw and label all the forces. So we can consider that because this plank rests on this scale, we're going to have an upward force acting on the plank due to the plank resting on the scale. So we're going to get an upward force. We can actually draw that in. So we're going to say we'll get an upward force here. Right? And we're going to call this force here F1. So we have an upward force that we're calling F1 that is acting um, due to the plank resting on the scale, so the scale exerts an upward force onto the plank. Now, we're also told that this plank is 3 meters, right? And it has a weight of, we're told, 270 newtons. So now, if this is 3 meters and it's a uniform plank, because they said it, they said it right here, a uniform plank. Now, once you have a uniform plank, we're going to have uh, the center of gravity located at the center. Right, and the center of gravity is the point where the weight of the object will act. So what we're going to have is we're going to have at the center, let us say here's the center. We're going to have a downward force, which is the weight of the plank acting downward. And we can call this one F2. So I'm going to call this one F2. And I'm going to say, since we know the weight, we're going to say F2 is equal to, it says, 270 newtons. So 270 newtons now also we have this girl standing right here now the weight of the girl will act downward so we're going to also get a downward force at this point due to the weight of the girl so we can draw it in so we get a downward force due to the weight of the girl right and i'm going to call this one well, this was f2 here so i'm going to call the weight of the girl i'm going to call it f3 Right, and then finally, because the plank also rests on this scale, I'm also going to get an upward force here. So let me just draw that in. So we get an upward force here. And I'm going to call this one F4. Right, so this is F4. Now if we go back to the question, it says that the scale, the scale at P read 354 newtons and the one at Q read 470 newtons. So what it means then is that the plank exerts a downward force at P of 354 newtons. So therefore, the plank will also exert an equal and opposite force, which is indicated by F1. Um, so it's going to be, F1 is going to be 354 newtons. So we can say this is 354 newtons. And similarly, uh, they say that F of, at Q, it reads 417, so therefore the plank exerts a downward force on Q of 417 newtons. So it's going to in turn uh, exert an upward or opposite force, but equal 
So it's going to be 417 Newton like that. So now, here we have our diagram, right, with all of our forces labeled. Now, the question here says now we are to calculate the girl's weight. Now, up top here, we mention the principle of moments, which says that the sum of the clockwise moments about a point must be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about a point. And we also say that the sum of all upward forces must equal to the sum of all downward forces. So we're going to consider the second scenario to assist us in answering this question. So now, if we go down here, we're going to say that the sum of the upward forces must equal the sum of the downward downward forces. So now, if we look at our diagram, we see that we have two upward forces, F1 and F4, and we have these two downward forces. So we can write that F1, sorry, so we can write F1 plus F4 must equal to F2 plus F3. So again, what we're saying is that our upward forces, F1 and F4, the sum of these must equal to the sum of these two downward forces, F2 and F3. So now, what we're going to say now is F1 is 354 newtons, so we can write that in. So 354 newtons plus F4, which was 417 newtons, equal F2. Let's see what F2 was again. F2 was 270. So we're going to say 270 newtons plus F3. And again, F3 is the weight of the girl. So we're going to simply take out our calculator and start to simplify this. So we're going to add these up. So we're going to say 354 plus 417 equal. So we get 771 newtons equal 270 newtons plus F3. Now we're going to make F3 the subject, so simply we're going to subtract 270 from both sides. So when we subtract 270 from this, we're going to get F3 is equal to 771 newtons minus 270 newtons. Now taking our calculator, we say 771 minus 270, and we get that F3 is equal to 501 newtons. And that would be the weight of the girl.